Hi Ed Faninja. Um I haven't played much of this video but I I found this video um yesterday on your, your YouTube of course um was uploaded in on the nineteenth of January in the in the United States. So that wasn't that long ago, a couple of weeks, say, about that. Okay. Hello again, everybody. I'm Brother Chooch, and I'm thinking out loud about the end times. So, I watched um, an interview, a live interview, with uh, Robert Breaker. I'm sure many of you YouTubers are familiar with him, and also Scotty Clark. I mean, one of the uh, most renowned YouTubers that talk about eschatology. Obviously, famous for being probably the first one who identified the Revelation 12 sign. Made some really awesome charts and videos. Of you don't need signs for the rapture. We're not meant to look for, for signs. That annoys me. About it, so certainly had my attention to listen into that interview. And I guess the title of my little video here is Be a Berean. Be a Berean. And that goes for me, that goes for watching any watchman, is be a Berean. What did the Bereans do? They went back to the scripture to see if things were so, as when they heard um, those preaching doctrine or, or from the scripture. Excellent principle to exercise and very much applicable to Rapture watchmen. Can happen to, to what should be today, a watchman? What should a watchman whether do? Whether it will or well, not, if you think about it is up the role to of, God. of a watchman, and I think they Eventually got this. Eventually, the rapture will happen when Jesus is, is ready. That a watchman would be on the this, walls of a city, and they'd be today, on the ramparts this, or wherever the, you know, week, they could look out to see off into the another horizon month, or the distance. Another week, and their job was to may report. Not even happen in my and probably lifetime. their life was on the line to be a good reporter, to report what they saw, and perhaps sound the alarm. So, I, I, I believe watchmen's needed to be very careful. It's like, okay, I saw um, some commotion or uh, ruffling in the, in the woods, if you will, off in the distance. I'm not sure what that is, but we need to be alert. I mean, we have intelligence that we have a neighboring nation um, that is not too found, fond of us and might be attacking at some point in the future. Now the ruffling and the commotion off in the distance out in the woods might simply be, you know, some animals or, you know, not a, uh, a threat to the city, but still, if it were to be a threat to the city, I want to warn and alert the city of potential, potential, uh, attack a potential enemy strike. Now think about the importance of having a watchman. I mean, that's their job. And so when you come and you go on YouTube and you look at various watchmen and they're saying this, that, and the other thing, really what they should be saying is, I noticed this, I, you know, Consider what's going on in the Middle East. Consider what's going on in Jerusalem. The scripture says this. Uh, we see this happening. When watchmen say things like, oh, it's got to be this day or it's got to happen that way, you need to do your due diligence and say, is that what the scripture is saying? Is that so? And if ever you come on my channel and you hear me saying, uh, it's this date, it's this way, it's got to be that one, it's got to be this one, please unsubscribe to me. Please don't watch my videos. That probably is a good indication that I've, I've lost my senses, or I'm at the very least disconnected with the Lord. So anyways, nothing against Scotty Clark. I 
I love the guy. I think he's brilliant. I like. I mean, he has a sense of humbleness in some way. Um, he admits that he's made mistakes, but what he said at the end of Robert Breaker actually made, I think, a remarkable video about the Rapture in 2019. And Robert Breaker was being gracious and just, I think, what Robert Breaker. More nonsense from Breaker. I do like Breaker when he teaches the gospel. It might happen this year, it might not, it could happen t today. And I agree w w with Ed here. It's nonsense. Right? In, trying to look, oh, it might happen here, right? I'm getting on with my life, right? It can happen t t today, okay? Even if it did happen today, I'll get in on with my life until the rapture happens. What tends to do is he'll say, I notice some, you know, people on the internet are saying this, that, and the other thing, and it's just interesting, and I'm, you know, just in kind of reiterating some of the things that he saw, but I get the sense that he is maybe online with the same uh, same line of thinking, but doesn't want to come straight out and say, yes, I, I think that this holds a lot of weight and this might happen. Uh, Robert Breaker ministers and teaches to so many thousands of people. I think he's very careful about throwing his lot in and saying, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in this camp. So that's okay. I, I respect that with Robert Breaker because I think that's being a watchman. You could... You don't you don't put all your chips in the middle and say this is the way it is. But the thing that concerned me about Scotty Clark is that he's got and again it's probably based on his study and research, but he was like very matter of factly at the end of that interview of saying like, you know, when Robert Breaker tried to introduce this thought like, hey, you know, there's a blood moon coming on and you and know some some people on the internet are saying it's lining up with 69 70 weeks and Tibet Shabbat and all, all you know and 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 it's just like Scotty was like sh shot it down oh there's there's a lot of blood moons uh still come you look at my chart there's a lot of blood moons this is this blood moons nothing special and one week after it people are going to forget about it and <clears throat> I struggled with that because I mean he might be right he might be right, but the reason why I struggle with that is he was so matter-of-factly about it. And I, you know, again, Scotty Clark could probably run circles around me in certain areas. I don't agree with everything he teaches. I, I think I it's fascinating really some of the things he brought him. out, <clears throat> but I don't, I don't Scotty agree with Clark. a bunch of things that he teaches or he feels that is accurate. And um, this is one of them. I don't think he should be so staunch on that, you know, this coming blood moon in a day or two is absolutely just nothing special. It's going to pass and it's just going to be, you know, uh, you know, just like the flavor of the month will change and that's that's it. No, well, well, you know what? We, I hope, we I hope are we in get February now and on it or around pass. this blood moon, but... As a watchman, I'm just careful to say things so matter-of-factly. I might say things like, well, I don't quite see it the way you do, or I I hear where you're coming from. And and the other thing that he said very matter-of-factly is that, well, you know, the, the feasts have to be the feasts have to be in order, and the next feast to be fulfilled is the Feast of Trumpets, and so you know, we have to have the rapture happen during the fall feasts, and then he'll come back to fulfill the Feast of Atonement in the fall. And the rapture can happen any time of the year, on any, in any year. It can happen today, happen tomorrow, whatever. And if it doesn't happen on those times, it doesn't happen, right? It's imminent, right? That's why I agree totally with Ed what 
Ed Veninger what he teaches on this. And I'm sorry, but I don't see anywhere in scripture where the rapture definitely has to happen on a feast day. Because to me, that takes away imminence. I That's believe right. that there is this uh, sense of imminence of his return. If the rapture has to happen on the Feast of Trumpets, well, to be quite honest with you, and I've been caught up in this pattern, uh, come September time, you get your house in order, you get prepared, you get ready, and then you get this, you know, the day comes and goes, and then some people try to add a month saying, well, you know, the barley harvest is delayed, and <clears throat> so you might get a little uh, other work up to excitement in October, whatever, and then that'll come and go. And then you got arguments about the calendar as well. This isn't the true Feast of Trumpet Day, and it's just so. The Jews to are me, meant to look for signs. We don't. and exhausting. And it's like, okay, it's November now. We're definitely past the Feast of Trumpets. We got to wait the next year, and then we go about our business. And I'm, I, I just don't see that. I don't, I don't see that as rapture can happen any as, time as the rapture. You know, and I've, I've made a video on this about not over. You know, I don't see about overemphasizing the feast days as things have to happen this way. Okay, there is. I think the feast days do. Spell out a um, Ed. I'm not gonna do the whole video on this, I think I'll stop there. Um, comments I made on his ch channel. I'll bookmark the uh video, okay? Thank you.